I think I finally decided on what I'm playing. At least for a little while. Knowing you, it's probably something like Herald or Monarch or I don't know, anything else that's not fun to play against. How come you don't just play Cyber Dragons anyways? Pharaoh sucks. I didn't get to get the Power Bond Searcher. They robbed me. So you just want an easy win no matter what then? Hell yeah! No, it's more like I like playing the crap that I like to play. Like, but you make fun of me for the decks that I like to play. Because you literally only play Black Wings or Weeb crap. They should make Bird Girls. You mean harpies? <laughs> now, let's get into this deck profile, guys, because this is the deck that I have chosen to go with. This is just a fun deck that I've had my eye on for a very, very long time. A shout out to my friend Jackson, who, uh, you know, got me hooked on this deck. I've been playing it a lot. I've, you know, I've liked fairy decks for a long time. You guys know, you know, I've been in the Herald uh, for a very long time in Yu-Gi-Oh! But uh, my friend Jackson got me uh, turned on to this deck. It's a, uh, it's a really fun, uh, control-based deck. You get to play all the best traps in Yu-Gi-Oh! Guys, you get to play this, the entire Solemn Brigade, and that's just too good. It's just too good, and, uh, you know, the uh, counter fairy, you know, Battleful Artemis, uh, you know, draw a card. That's just some, you know, classic. Uh, you know, uh, anti-meta uh, strategies. It's just, it's just a really fun deck. And another person who got me, uh, you know, turned onto this deck was um, actually Johnny, whether he knows it or not. Uh, uh, Johnny, uh, you guys know know him as Asian Persuasion 2008. Yeah, like I, um, he was playing this deck. At, I believe a next uh, regional was where I ran into him at. He was playing this deck, and I was like, man, that guy's playing this deck. That, I haven't seen that deck in a long time. I want to play that. And then ever since, I just kind of always had it uh, on the back burner in my head. And uh, you know, getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh, I was like, screw it. I'm gonna build it. Um, there will be a Cyber Dragon deck profile eventually because I still, you know, I'm always messing around with that deck. You guys know me way too well. Um, I'm always messing around with that deck, but this is the main deck right now, guys. Um, this and Herald. I really like Herald as a combo deck, but uh, this it wins me more games because Herald can be interrupted too easily, and this really doesn't care as much, and this plays arguably more stopping power because of the traps and being able to stop normal summons and things, so uh, yeah, this is just a really fun deck, and playing all the good rank fours that I like playing is just also a bonus for me and this deck allows you to do all that it allows you to control the board and just kind of auto win uh, it's just a classic kind of anti-meta deck I, I really can't explain it except to show you guys so let's go ahead and get into this deck profile we're gonna start this off with three Ariana Grande um, guiding Aradne whatever you want to call it you play three of this because you do not discard for trap cards uh, you do not uh, pay cost for your counter trap cards you just get to solemn people for free and all and ultimate providence people for free this card is just insane you don't really care about its scales you do care that it's a level four fairy for ties of the brethren and stuff but other than that you really just want its pendulum effect that's what you want you want to not pay cost for anything and then um three battle for artemis because this is the uh you know classic uh, counter fairy card this is what everybody's after right here this is you you draw you like you get this on the board you get all your traps set you draw when you stop your opponent's junk and you win. That's that's the whole goal of this deck. You get a Battle for Artemis. You protect your Battle for Artemis with Honest, guys. Um, I still play three Honest in this deck because Cards from the Sky is just that good. It is just that good, and this is your main target for Cards of the Sky, especially if you're playing under uh, Cards of the Demise. You know, Card of Demise, if you've already activated that, you're going to pitch your whole hand anyways. That Honest is not going to stay in your hand for, for its effect, so you might as well discard it off of, or banish it, rather, off of, um, you know, Cards from the Sky. So, um, I really like this ratio. Don't treat this guy as a monster because he's nine. And then you play two Barrier Statute of the Heavens. Uh, this should come in foil. I don't know why this doesn't come in an Ultra Rare or Super Rare or something. All the Barrier Statutes should. It's a crime that they don't. Um, especially, you know, this deck being like all foil. It's a crime some of the stuff that doesn't come in foil, guys. Ugh. When everything gets reprinted in foils, there's no excuse for this kind of, you know, behavior by Konami. <laughs> anyways, I'm just giving them a hard time. But Barrier Statute of the Heavens, guys. You uh, Normal Summon this, protect it with Honest and win. Or Normal Summon this, uh, protect it with Moon Mirror Shield and win or you uh, special summon this off of ties, you know, with the Battle for Artemis on the board, and you win. That's pretty much it. This is kind of the best card in the deck, to be honest. Unless you're playing against something else that plays a lot of light monsters, then, of course, they can play through this. But for the most part, this guy's a win button. Or a chick, or whatever that is. Yeah, this is a win button. Yes, this is a win button. Um, but then I play only two Condemned Witch. Uh, this is the main reason why I picked this deck back up, though, or picked it up for whatever. Anyways, this is the main reason why I picked up this deck. Because not only is this card just really cool looking, it's a dark, you know, fairy witch looking thing. It's Condemned Witch. It's a secret rare. It's a dark fairy witch thing. It's, she had me sold just on her looks. But she's also got two effects that are very, very, very good. She can search like a chalice or, you know, Forbidden Lance or something. And then 
then she can also, you know, tribute herself during your opponent's turn and get out Artemis or you get out Statute from your deck and just kind of win. Um, especially if you have Honest in hand to protect the Statutes. It's very, very good, guys. Uh, if she wasn't a card, I probably wouldn't have picked up this deck. Um, she's just, she's really, really cool. Um, I like her at 2 and 2, 2 Chalice, 2 Witch. Play whatever you want. I didn't like 3 of her because, you know, she's not a light for Cards in the Sky. Um, that's just my opinion, though. Um, I really liked a 3 Honest. Uh, 3 Honest was too good and to cut. Like, uh, God, Honest, do not underestimate Honest, guys. It is still a very, very powerful card, even in 2019. Do not underestimate things that can activate in damage step. Just don't underestimate that. It's very, very powerful, even to this day. And uh, Honest, once again, being a light for Cards from the Sky, being a fairy for, um, you know, uh, Ties of the Brethren, it's just, it's very, very, very good. Very good. Um, that's, uh, that's it for the monsters, guys. You play 13 monsters. I'm only playing 13 monsters anyways. So that would be like 10 that you normal summon, or want to normal summon technically, or these you would, you know, keep in your hand. Um, and these are your spells because you activate these uh, so you don't pay cost for your counter traps. And you guys are going to be asking about, you know, the more uh, Parshath counter fairies. I did really like the Parshath counter fairies. I liked, you know, Artemis, you draw a card when you activate a counter trap. Parshath, you know, the classic Parshath, you drew a card when you had piercing damage. I liked, you know, how they combined those in the structure deck. But guys, um, as a whole, um, I feel like just playing the classic um, counter fairy strategy versus the new Parshath counter fairy strategy is stronger. But play whatever you want, guys, and have fun doing it. This is just what I'm playing. You guys can change this up however you want to. Just use this as a base for your deck. And to the spells, guys, uh, three ties of the brethren. Um, you play three ties of the brethren because um, you activate it on either, like, any one of your light fairies. Let's just say you have this in hand, then you activate it on this, and then get out, you know, these two guys. Or if you have this in hand, you activate it on this and get these two guys. Either way, guys, you want to end, like, with this in hand and these two on field and some traps because you win. Uh, ties of the brethren allows you to do that more easily. Um, you know, like I've stated, uh, getting this, being able to summon this from deck is very, very, very good. Uh, you lock your opponent out of being able to play Yu-Gi-Oh. They can only summon light monsters, and if they're not playing something, you know, like any deck that plays a lot of light monsters, they are SOL. They lose. They lose Yu-Gi-Oh, you know? And before I forget, guys, I have to give the hugest shout-out to 1UP TCG for providing me with a lot of these cards. Actually, most of these cards for this deck. Uh, they're an amazing sponsor. This deck is just so, 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 so sick. Moving on, um, we have uh, three Card of Demise, guys. So, um, Card of Demise lets you see more cards. Uh, it lets you draw three cards. If you set everything, you know, have nothing in your hand. It's very, very, very good. You use this to see more of your traps. Um, I only play 10 traps in this deck. I only played the 10 best ones. Um, uh, I would play more counter traps, but it just didn't work out. You'll, you guys will see what, you know, what I'm playing instead of more traps in a second. But, um, three pot of duality. Um, a lot of the time you will duality into this thing. I will grab this thing off duality so much. Um, another thing I will grab off of duality a lot is cards from the sky or a fairy for cards from the sky. Um, I will do that a lot. Uh, cards from the sky needs to come in foil, by the way drives me crazy, drives me nuts. Why doesn't this come in foil? Why doesn't this come in foil? Anyways, it's just another thing that drives me crazy, kind of like the barrier statue thing. But these are your 12 uh, best spells in the deck. You play, you know, three ties because it's an auto win play, you know, with the statutes, you know, like I've been explaining, get that honest, you know, to protect it. Cards from the Demise lets you see more cards. Pot of Duality, your classic consistency card. And then um, Cards from the Sky lets you, you know, see more fairies. The only thing I don't like about um, Cards from the Sky is that uh, it's not like a lure. Um, I mean, I don't like that it's not foil, <laughs> like it should come in foil, but I also don't like that it's not like a lure where you can't, you know, draw first before you banish. That would make it slightly better, um, but yeah, you have to banish first for this, so it's not as good as the Lure of Darkness, but it's still a card that lets you see cards, so it's pretty good in my opinion. I um, mean, I play uh, Moon Mirror Shield. I actually max out on Moon Mirror Shield because um, whether you're going first or second, this card's good. Um, you either put this on your Battle for Artemis going first, or your Barrier Statute, or whatever going first, and you protect it that way, or going second, you use this to beat over anything that your opponent gets out. And that's it, guys. It's a good going first or going second card. Um, you have to max out on this thing. I tried other ratios. Like, it, you have to max out on it. You have to. Sometimes it sucks, of course, seeing two of it in your opening hand, but if you see your other draw cards, it's not so bad. But, um, yeah, you have to play three of it. You, just, you have to, guys. You have to. And then, um, in my opinion, the two chalice is perfect. I, I liked the two and two ratio. Once again, play whatever you want. Um, I liked the two condemned witch, uh, two chalice. Um, chalice is a really, really good card, though. Um, it's not as good as, you know, seeing a counter trap because, of course, you can't draw off of Artemis, you know, uh, because of it or anything. Um, 
but it, it's still a stop card nonetheless. Let's just say the normal summon, I don't know, the Avaraptor or Stratos or something, I don't know, you can, you know, stop its effect. Like, uh, Forbidden Chalice is one of those cards, it's just, it's just an oldie but a giddy. There you go, it's an oldie but a giddy. Um, I wish I had the ultimate rare ones, I need the OTs, that'd be so sweet, but I don't got them! Anyways, though, I do have, uh, Super Lances, which I'll show you guys in a second, but yeah, that is all the spells, guys, that is all the spells. That is 13 monsters, 17 spells, and I have 10 traps here, so, uh, for the traps, we have 3 solid judgments because it stops anything I think that's pretty self-explanatory uh, you th these are the main reasons why you play the deck besides Artemis and stuff guys th this is why you play the deck you max out on all the good trap cards you play three judgment uh, three strike uh, three Providence and you don't pay for cost for any of these because of the Aradne and then um, Warning, um, this card can be lots of different things, like you can swap this for, I don't know, Third Chalice, uh, Condemned Witch, I, I don't know, you play, you swap this for anything, I don't know. I play Warning though because not only is it another counter trap card, so you can, you know, draw off of Artemis, but um, I like being able to get normal summons. It's actually part of the same reason why I was playing Forced Back in the deck at one point, because I like getting normal summons. Um, another counter trap you can consider is like Curse Seal because, um, you know, Sky Strikers, they can go screw themselves. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you can play. Play. I mean drastic drop off the card, but you know, I, I like I like a uh, solemn warning guys That's that's what I like. I like being able to get um, you know This even gets like a poly if they're playing poly or should all fusion if they're playing should all fusion uh, This will get that um, it won't get super poly because you know you can't negate super poly nothing negates super poly But um, other than super poly this deck can stop like anything like it just it really does It stops like anything and you draw cards when you stop stuff to boot for the extra deck though guys um, I play two lightning because you play all the good rank fours you have plenty of room in this extra deck for two regular Utopias, so you could play two Lightning to slap on top of those Utopias. Uh, makes perfect sense, plus these are the ulti Utopias, so they get up to 6,000 attacks instead of 5,000. Ooh, gotta play these ones. But uh, uh, Utopia Prime, guys. I only play one Prime. Its effect is really good. Um, banishes uh, your opponent's special summon stuff. It has the potential to wipe your opponent's board and deal damage to them. So these, this effect is really good, and um, I do side sticks and chairs, so that make going into uh, Lightning off of this, you know, through sticks and chairs is also very good. But um, um, you know, like I'm because I'm playing uh, sticks and chairs. I'm also just playing the Deltaros. You know, citing uh, sticks and chairs. Um, playing the Deltaros because Deltaros with sticks and chairs going second is really, really good. Blow up your opponent's entire board, get over anything. Um, I feel like this is just like perfect. I, I, two Utopias. You never. I never really make two lightnings, but I, I think I have one time, and like I think it was like made both times through regular Utopia. I don't think like in a game two situations I've made a second uh, lightning through this. It's usually over by then. But anyways, the Utopia package, you know, Deltaros to be able to go second uh, with six chairs, it makes sense. Um, then you play a Tsukiyomi because you can discard your hand and see two cards. Um, it's just, a, you know, another thing to go into. Um, and then, um, Exiton Knight. Um, Exiton Knight blows up the board. These are all your lights, by the way, that you can go into under Barrier Statute of the Heavens. So that's why I'm showing you guys these ones first, uh, starting with the Utopia package, ending with uh, the Exiton Knight. These are all the lights that you could go into, um, you know, being under the Barrier Statute, having that on the board. So you can summon any one of these. You can Exiton, you know, all that stuff, because these are all light monsters. But um, now for the staples, Castell, because it uh, gets rid of anything, you know, set a monster, gets rid of any face up. It's just a, it's a staple card. It's like the best rank four of all time, like literally. Um, Tornado Dragon's another really good one. This uh, replaced a Diamond Dire Wolf and a lot of other stuff. Uh, Tornado Dragon's really, really good. I, I like it a lot. Um, Abyss Dweller, because Abyss Dweller, you kind of just win if uh, main phase two if you make this against a lot of decks. You really do. Um, it's too good not to play. Um, Baguska because it stalls for you and you know does stupid stuff for you. Um, but uh, Cowboy because you can just win to steal games. You know there's there are times where you will be able to cowboy for game in this deck. Actually, a lot of times where you'll you'll cowboy for game in this deck. So uh, Cowboy gotta have it. Seriously, do not cut it. Um, Honor Arc, the original Castell, the original Castell because I'm old. But um, no, uh, before we had Castell and Duelist Alliance, we had this and Legacy of the Valiant. I want to say, uh, but uh, this got over your monsters that couldn't be, uh, you know, destroyed by mere force and stuff. This would, like, suck them up like Beals, I don't know, and other stuff. But we had this before we had Castell. Um, this one's actually debatably better in some situations than Castell, and once again, you have room in the extra deck, so why not play it? And then the last card in the extra deck, I have uh, just Augusto Emerald, because recycles your deck. That's it. Recycles your deck, and uh, that's 15 cards for the extra deck, guys. 40 in the main, 15 in the extra, and now 15 for the side. And of course, I've been talking about sticks and chairs. Let's start off with those. Uh, three stick, three chair, because 
because you want to open up one of these. If you guys don't know what these do, um, you want to side these in uh, going second, of course, um, you know, for going second because this deck is better at going first than going second. So this gives you, um, you know, these guys give you more options, you know, for going second. It lets you go into Delteros. Uh, this deck lets you pop stuff when you XE summon with it. Just really good stuff. But if you guys don't know what these do, um, you want to ideally open up with one of each of these. You normal summon, you special summon this one, draw a card, search another chair from the deck off of this effect, special summon this chair, draw again, and then XE summon for like Delteros. Let's just say Delteros. When you XE summon for Delteros, the stick will pop an opponent's card, give you another draw, and then you activate Delteros's effect and pop an, a card um, on your opponent's side of the field. So um, it just gives you something that lets you go super plus, lets you see cards, and uh, you know these are fairies, so these work with Ties of the Brethren. And um, I, I just like I, I really like this guys, and I was already uh, you know I was main decking these. I've been main decking these guys um, and heralds for a very very long time. Sticks and chairs are just amazing. I hate the artwork on them. I still hate the artwork to this day because I think they look stupid. <laughs> but uh, their their effects are way too good, guys. Their effects are way too good, and uh, once again they are fairy monsters they're like fairies at that um and then so here's what you do guys um i will side out card of demise i will side out pot of duality take out your cards from the sky for hecatrice um the reason why is because um you play valhalla too i, I will take out my condemned witch for valhalla's Typically, um, you can take out two other things, but um, here's the point here guys this this right here I couldn't put down over evenly matched. Um, I like evenly matched. I need to get some but through testing I actually uh, I determined that I didn't need any in real life through this um, The reason why is because evenly matched is just three cards. So you have to rely on seeing it uh, You know, I mean you draw cards do will help you you know see that card uh, but being able to consistently go into Exiton or any rank four to be able to play through things, not to mention sticks and chairs, giving you pluses as you're playing through things was too good. It was too good to put down. And I really liked playing Hecatrice because this thing, or Hesitrice, I don't know how you pronounce this card. I don't care. But this thing's also a level four for Ties of the Brethren. You discard this to get Valhalla. Valhalla, you activate and you special summon one fairy, normal summon another fairy. You get uh, your rank fours more consistently. That is the goal here. But another thing that's really cool that I found out through testing this okay um, and I can I can maybe even show you guys but uh, here's what uh, you know like in play some test hands or something like that but here's what you do okay if you see two stick and either this or this um, you can do something really dirty that I like and that's paid off a lot for me every time that, that I've opened like that uh, going second you activate the Hecatrice Valhalla special summon activate effect search normal summon draw search draw and now you have two sticks for Delteros, and you can pop two cards, draw two cards, and then activate Delteros' effect, pop another card. Very, very, very good. Not to mention you can pop you can pop two cards that way and then go into lightning and get over something. So the point being, guys, point being, I could like as soon as I started messing with that and started actually seeing it in hands, and this gives you like a wider this gives you like I don't know a wider engine to play in this deck for going second. It gives you more side deck cards that you see more often, if that makes sense, versus evenly matched, which is just like a one-off, you know, trap card like I was trying to explain earlier. I just like this, you know, I like this on the side, and once again I'll take out, you know, cards from the demise i will take out pot of duality matter of fact i'll show you guys really quick you take out cards from the sky you take out pot of duality and you take out card of demise and then you take out your two condemned witches for valhalla's uh, the reason why is because um your Condemned Witch doesn't really work with Ties of the Brethren or anything. Um, your your Chalice is still good in the deck alone, you know what I mean? But uh, this gives you two things to replace it with. It's just, you can replace, the, you can take out Warning or whatever if you want for the Valhalla. This is just what I typically do. You're free to do whatever you want, of course. But um, that's what I typically do for siding, uh, for going second in this deck. Uh, you guys can do whatever you want, but this is been working for me actually a lot more than you think it would and that's why I'm playing this deck it's just it, it catch, catches people off guard too and do not underestimate being able to gain advantage off of sticks and chairs guys do not underestimate that um, another reason why um, I really like Condemned Witch though is because you get Sky Striker you can uh, side in Lance and then you're unaffected by all their you know quick play all the Sky Striker quick plays that like take your monsters and do all that stuff yeah you can be unaffected by those so Forbidden Lance is a great card now maybe more important in the side deck than anything else besides like the sticks and chairs and all that 
Typhoon, this can also be MST. I just like the added hand trap effect of Typhoon, but you guys can play MST or whatever you want here. But um, the main reason why you want to play this, though, is because there can only be one is a card. Uh, True Draco is a deck, and that deck plays that card, and other decks also play. There can only be one. Um, therefore, you need to have an out. You need to. Seriously, there can only be one is kind of a pain in the dick for this deck. So uh, Typhoon, very, very, very good. Um, matter of fact, I'm in another build, like I was saying earlier um, when I was testing, uh, evenly matched in this. Um, I maxed out on Typhoon just because of uh, there can only be one because that it's a pain. It's a good card. It's a very, very good card. Very good Floodgate card. And um, I can see why it's so popular. It's it's very strong against decks like this, uh, decks that play all one type. Or, you know, whether it be like, you know, you send you for Beast Warrior, I don't know, just whatever I, random. I'm thinking anti meta right now. But the point is, anything that plays all the same type. That card wrecks it, so you need to have an out to it. Play Typhoon, guys. Typhoon is um, very, very good. Um, you know, it gives you that added uh, added hand trap ability. But once again, you can play MST, you can play Twin Twisters, you can play Cosmic Cyclone, play whatever you want here. Just be sure that you're able to get that there can only be one off of the board, or you will probably lose, um, especially if you've already sided in these guys for going second, right? And they flip that. You can't stick chair. You can't. You can't. You just, like, that foils your whole, you know, like, I don't know, smoke screen or whatever you would call this. It foils your whole, like, side deck strategy, basically. So, yeah, be sure to have an out to that. Other than that, though, guys, um, I really like this deck. Um, other than its weakness to uh, There Can Only Be One, I like this deck a, a lot. Like, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, I like playing uh, Solemn Judgment. It's one of my favorite cards. Um, I like playing this in Goats. I like playing it in this deck. It's just a very powerful card, guys. Very, very classic card at that. Um, I like playing Card of Demise. I like playing slower decks. I like playing decks that control the board and um, this definitely lets you slow play and control the board there are times where you won't even attack with this deck and not do anything until you ties first you know I mean you'll just like burn a whole turn just to ties and further solidify your board before you will even attack for damage and stuff that happens so often with this and it makes it funner it makes it like you know um, it makes it more of a control deck than other decks out right now in my opinion it makes it a lot funner but um, I mean I don't know true Draco is also a control deck true Draco is just so annoying though seriously stop playing that deck Play some other anti-meta. That was my true Draco rant. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe. <laughs>